So pleased to be able to uh, chat with Maureen Geary and Sean Glennon of the Quincy Planning Department about the Quincy Small Business Grant Program and how it's uh, helping out small businesses right here in the city. So uh, Maureen, Sean, welcome to both of you. Thanks so much for, for spending some time with us. Thank you, Thank Joe. Thank you for having us. Pleasure. I know this is a program that was uh, put together uh, pretty quickly, actually, and pretty effectively to help uh, small businesses uh, recover from the pandemic. And Sean, I thought maybe uh, we could start with you and just to give a little, um, you know, information as to as to how this developed. Sure. So several weeks ago, actually, members of uh, our department, start on planning and community development uh, folks, got together and were looking at programs that other communities were offering. They some got out of the gate really early, such as Worcester. And so we looked at their program and we, we started talking to them early just to be able to get a program designed together so that if the city did want to move forward with something like this, we'd be ready to go. And um, unfortunately, with the mayor's support, uh, we went from a, a pretty small allocation. We su suggested maybe $250,000 uh, to, to help some folks, um, suggesting perhaps $5,000 grants. And the mayor said, you know what, let's go all in with our, with our uh, initial funding of CARES Act money, which is over one million, a little over one million dollars, and he said um, at the launch event a few weeks ago, not only was he going to put that one million dollars towards it, but uh, he was going to take another million and other CARES Act funding and match that. So now it's a two million dollar program, uh, and he also upped the ante to uh, a max grant of ten thousand dollars. And so um, as of this morning, we have five hundred nineteen applications in the system. Uh, about a third of them actually haven't been submitted yet. So that means that people have started the application. But for whatever reason, maybe they're gathering some documentation, haven't uploaded it yet. Uh, that hasn't been submitted yet. So we definitely want to encourage folks, if you're in the system, you, you do need to click submit. So if you, if you haven't completed that process, please do that. Um, we're, we're asking by 4 p.m. tomorrow, Friday, uh, to do that. And, uh, and then we'll uh, get moving. We're, we've already started some of the underwriting uh, process with some of the cases, just try and get ahead of the curve a little bit for the ones that have submitted. But um, since this is a merit-based program, which is, I think, very important to mention, it's not a first-come, first-served program, uh, we really need to get all the cases in before we can then allocate funding. So uh, folks still do have time, and we encourage uh, people, if they haven't submitted yet, to please, to please do that. Okay, and is, do you have any kind of a sense of a timeline for when the grants will be distributed? It, it depends on how many cases end up being submitted altogether. We assume there'll be probably an uptick over this last 24 hours. Uh, before the, the timeline expires. And then uh, we go case by case. It depends on how, how easy it is. Uh, some of these are, are pretty easy to recommend moving forward. Others, they're not so clear cut. Uh, in many cases, folks haven't uploaded all the information they've submitted, but they haven't actually uploaded everything we need. Uh, so actually, one thing I want to mention is that a lot of people are asking for leasing assistance, which is a rental assistance you know, for the unit, which is great. That's exactly what we want to fund for these brick and mortar mom and pop shops, but they're not actually uploading the lease document itself, which is not helpful because we need to see that in order to make a determination of what that, that grant amount uh, will be. So if folks haven't uploaded their lease and they're asking for rental assistance, we'd ask them to please go back into the system. If it's not there, we have people in the department that are reaching out to them uh, to, to be proactive in that process. Um, but if you don't submit everything, it, it slows down the process. So it really depends on once we have this deadline, have, it, have people submitted everything they need. If they have, that'll speed up the process. If they haven't, it's going to slow it down. So we're looking at at least two weeks to underwrite these. We don't expect any checks to go out um, until the end of May at the earliest, more than likely looking at the first week of June. Okay, very good. Um, and we should talk, uh, I guess, a little bit about um, who is eligible for these grants. What are some of the, the criteria that they have to meet? And, and certainly, Maureen, feel free to jump in as well if you, if you have things to add. So, so the basic, some of the basic criteria, um, and it's pretty easy. Um, first of all, the application is an online application, and it's once they get there, it's a very simple application. Um, and I say that lightly because the federal government, the, F, the SBA, um, uh, applications and loan process have been pretty arduous. So we try to make this as simple as possible. And it can be challenging regardless, um, regardless how easy we make it. Um, so some other criteria, criteria for small business owners is they need to be small business owners, 20 employees or less. Um, revenue, um, our revenue, we'd like to see a million dollars or less. And the, the program is geared towards for-profit business entities. Um, and, and having a business obviously in Quincy. So those are kind of the basic um, basic criteria. We have online applications. So if you want to 
quincyma.gov. Uh, there's a um, small business banner at the top of the website. They click on that banner, get into the um, to the small business criteria and um, and a link that'll bring them to the online application. We have people on on hand. Um, there is a number for Jim Scribby who is handling calls coming in. We're all everybody's handling calls, but we're kind of funneling them to uh, to Jim to answer questions and get these people um, answer any questions as immediately as possible, so that we can get these applications processed and get as much documentation as possible. Okay, and what? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sean. Yes, I think we should mention too that we do have a small list of ineligible business types. Yeah. Um, you know, such as. Uh, I mean, liquor stores, for example, are they weren't closed as part right. of the process. So, you know, revenue might be down, but we're, we're trying to look at the ones that were most affected, uh, you know, by the shutdown. So, so uh, liquor stores are ineligible, check cashing facilities, um, uh, the, the real estate business is still functioning, although not at the same level. But uh, we, we have uh, put real estate on that list of ineligible activities, our, our businesses and the national chains. Uh, national chains, you know, they, they do have the support of their national organization. They own a lot of real estate in, in many cases, uh, you know, large assets. Um, so national chains are on the list as well, unless the business is a franchise. And if it's independently owned, like, a, you know, a Dunkin' Donuts, for example, if it's independently owned, that's something that we'll look at case by case. But otherwise, national franchises um, are ineligible. We've been seeing cases um, of other stimulus grants going to businesses that maybe didn't need it so much. So uh, we're trying to avoid that in Quincy. We're really trying to focus on the mom and pop shops that have been in Quincy a long time. This might be you know, the deciding factor of whether or not they, they have to close. And so those are the ones we're you know, really trying to save. Yeah, I'm sure you're thinking small independently owned restaurants, um, you know, barber shops, maybe a, a small bakery or a, a laundromat, um, something of that nature. Exactly. Exactly. You should um, uh, tell folks what kind of information uh, that you'll be looking for in this application. You know, what should these business owners be prepared to, to present on the application? Do you want me to grab that, Tony? You want, you want to grab that? Uh, it's, it's, so it's an eight-step application process. Uh, you know, that you, first, you, you just register in the system. The very first screen is literally just a four-question eligibility pre-screen. Then it gets into your personal contact information, the business information, ownership. In many cases, we're seeing, you know, a lot of these are sole proprietorships. It's 100% owned by one person. That's pretty simple. But if uh, it's more than one person, we're seeing a lot of 50-50 partnerships, three-way splits, four-way splits. Hmm. Um, and so we want to see that, you know, if uh, the person uh, applying is only a 25% owner, we need to see this the income uh, certifications of those other three people too, because otherwise, if if um, you know you're we're only getting it from one person, we don't know if the other uh, the three are actually low mod income people too, and that's what we're what we're looking at. So we might have to prorate the grant to one fourth of maybe what it would be, unless we get that other information. Um, and then we ask uh, how much are you asking for. Uh, most people are saying ten thousand, and I don't blame them. No. Um, Unfortunately, with 500 applications in the system, we now have you know over five million dollars in requests. We only have two million to give. So right. this is this is tough. Um, you know, it's not unusual for us every year to receive more in requests than we have in funding in CDBG in general. This is not a new thing for us, mm -hmm. but to have this kind of demand for such an emergency situation, this is unprecedented for us. So this, these are some really hard decisions we're going to have to make. Uh, moving forward. But in any case, there's a funding screen. We're asking them how much do you, you know, you're asking and what would you put it towards? And then we need to see the backup for that. The, the last screen is, is this list of required documents. Um, and then, and then you submit and then you'll receive a confirmation. And that's important. I think uh, to mention that you will receive a confirmation once you submit the process. So if you haven't received that confirmation yet, if you're not sure if you're, if you think you've submitted, but you haven't received that email, uh, we'd encourage you to give uh, contact Jim, whose information is, is on the screen login okay and the payments once they are made uh, you know who will they go to will they go to the actual owners will they go to the mortgage companies the, the leases you know how will that happen they will go to the owners in this case we're, we're looking uh you know at their their whole package and so we'll we'll send them an award letter uh detailing what the grant amount is we'll have the check in there and then also there's going to be a grant agreement in there because these are federal funds. We need them to certify that they're going to use the funds for the intended purpose. Um, and then we're going to want to check in with them, you know, maybe six months or a year from now to just to, to see what happened. Um, so 
we feel comfortable sending them the check directly because we do have that grant agreement attached. So they're going to certify that they're using the money for it. Okay. So would you advise them to kind of uh, to create a record of, of how they use that payment then? Yes. And we are focusing on, on rent and mortgage payments. So it's pretty clear cut. And that's why we're, we're focusing on rent for that reason is yeah. that, you know, we, we have that lease. We know exactly what the monthly payment is. So let's say we give them two months worth of rent. We know, you know, we can back it up with, with that information. Sure. Do you anticipate um, this program being extended again or, or done again? It depends on if there's future money. I mean, right now we've, we've only seen the first wave come through. And so we have the million dollars of CDBG plus the mayor's commitment of another million and other CARES Act funding. We have seen in the news yesterday that there's another stimulus package coming out. So maybe, hmm. but you know, we, we, we don't have, we can't say, you know, today if, if that'd be another wave or not. Okay. It would be good. It really would be good if we if we could. Um, I think that that would be our goal. I mean, we have over two thousand small business owners in the city of Quincy, and so far we've hit a quarter of them. Yeah. So, you know, we'd love the opportunity, obviously. Um, so, with the mayor's office to to spread that out and and really reach more business owners at this point. I read uh, in the application that uh, one of the criteria is that they have to prove a uh, significant loss of revenue uh, since March 10th. And also this kind of has to be their sole or their main source of income uh, for their livelihood. So how do they, how do they prove those two things? If it's a business that has been shut down as part of the governor's stay home advisory, then it's, it's pretty clear. I mean, we, okay. we know that's just, if, if they're, um, if they own the business and it's been shut down, I mean, it's, it's, we just take them. We, we take them at our word because we know there's, there's a, a state declaration that they can't operate. So, okay. um, and that's also the reason why we're looking at that partnership split is that if it's a hundred percent owned, then it, it leads to assuming that's their primary source of revenue. If sure. they're a 25% owner, maybe they're not there all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why we just, we look at it as a case by case basis and try to, uh, dig deeper into it if we have questions about. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, a lot of this is, uh, is the trust uh, and honor system. Um, you know, you're putting a lot of faith um, in, in the owners to do the right thing. And I think it's important to point out too, that um, the city is administering this. I mean, it's federal dollars, but you know, the city doesn't have to do, to do this. This is the administration taking it upon themselves. And I know it's not happening in every community. So I think that's important to point out. Thank you, Joe. We, uh, in fact, uh, Jim Fatsy's our planning director asked me to, to, to you know, mention that we, we do have a staff of 17 people that are fully committed to this program. And um, literally day by day, we're adding more staff members to this program. You know, it started as a, as a pretty small group of, of three, then four, then five. And, and now, you know, pretty much half the department is working on this program. And fortunately, we, we do have the resource to be able to do that in-house um, as some other lines of business, so to speak, have slowed down um, over the past several weeks. We've been able to utilize staff and, and you know, reallocate them for, for different uh, purposes. So it's worked out pretty well. It's not been an easy process, but mm-hmm. fortunately we do have the, the staff in-house to be able to do this. Sure. Maureen, are you still able to assist uh, businesses uh, with the Small Business Administration programs uh, if, you know, if, if they for some reason don't qualify for this city grant? I know that's, that's as you mentioned earlier, that's, that's been uh, an issue, uh, yeah. to say the least. No, it has. Um, I think business owners, that seemed to be tapering off a little bit. Okay. Um, the new PPP, the pay, Payroll Protection Program, reopened about two weeks ago, and they had another surge of, um, of small business owners to apply for that because they kind of changed the rules a little, a little bit. They made it more accessible to the small business owners. Um, so I think I've seen a little bit of a tapering off. With, with gearing this one towards our small business owners and being a grant, mm-hmm. I mean, this is really lifting those businesses up that wouldn't even apply for the, for the federal programs. Okay. Um, and I've gotten, I mean, the communications that we've had, it's just amazing. It gives me the chills and as to some of the conversations I've had with these small business owners and how grateful they are for the city and for the mayor's office and, and the planning department to come up with a grant even as little as it may seem, $10,000, that takes people a little ways. Yeah. Um, a couple of months worth of rent can hold them over until they can pay their landlord when they start opening up again. Yeah. So um, it's really, this is meaningful and we've gotten some incredible um, heartwarming um, responses to what we're doing. And, and I really, I'm saying it, I really appreciate the business owners being so, so generous and so thoughtful to, to be thankful. 
Um, interestingly, we've gotten some companies that have applied for the SBA loans and um, started the application and then realized that they didn't qualify because they may be in the, a different bracket. They may have already received funds. Um, but a number of them have said, you know, I, I've stopped the application because I, I don't think I need it since I've gotten funds elsewhere, number okay. one. And number two, they wanted to leave it for those people who really do need it. Wow. They didn't use that money if they didn't really need to. And that was just, I mean, it makes you feel like they're all in it together and they're working to help support each other. It's, yeah. It's, it's like yeah. finding money on the street and, you know, and turning it in knowing it's not yours. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So that's, um, I, I'm really, really happy to hear those. We, we have a lot of very nice stories um, to talk about when this is over. That's nice to hear um, because, you know, so many of these small businesses operate on such a thin margin uh, to begin with. Uh, so many of them put everything, you know, all their life savings into these businesses, um, you know, with hope and faith that it's going to pay off. So, yeah, $10,000, um, I'm sure, is like a, a, a gift from heaven. No, no question. Yeah. I read a, a case yesterday or a couple of days ago, and it was a, a mom and pop, husband and wife uh, owned restaurant, and both of them are th their income is coming from the same restaurant, and they that that's their primary source of income for both yeah. of them. And they've been shut down since mid March. They have no income coming in. They've got three kids at home. You know, they own their home. Um, you know, there's some there's some heartbreaking stories too. So you know, to Maureen's point, to to be able to provide anything, and I, and I should know, you know, now that we're up to this over $5 million in requests. I do want to stress that that 10 K is a max and, you know, probably not going to be realistic in mm -hmm. most cases. We, we want to try and spread this as much as possible. So, but even, you know, even half that, if we're able to provide, you know, let's say two months worth of rent on a business, mm -hmm. that would at least bring them current in most cases, because they would have presumably paid March by the time it was shut down in mid March. So if we're able to pay April and May, and we get them that check by the beginning of June and, and that, you know, brings them into sort of the beginning of the, the summer season. If we're able to see a, a reopening by then, um, if we can just make them whole in some capacity to bring them current and then hopefully that provides a smooth transition into reopening, um, hopefully over the next uh, you know, few weeks. And then, then I think that's a good thing. Yeah, you know, so many small businesses uh, support the city and community in so many ways through the sponsorship of local sports teams or, you know, Girl Scout, Boy Scout troops, um, you name it. Um, the, the, they're always being asked uh, to give uh, gift cards or what have you. So nice uh, for the city to be able to give back a little to them this time for sure. I haven't heard of any of their communities, uh, at least to this degree, doing something like this. You mentioned Worcester, Sean, but I, I don't know of many others. There aren't many others, <laughs> it, it, and I think that's that's um, part of the challenge because they're they're federal funds, as you know, as, as Maureen uh, mentioned earlier. It's it's it, they're always strings attached with federal money, and and for good reason. You know, we're stewards of federal money. We want to make sure we're we're doing right by the federal government and protecting. Um, you know, these are taxpayers' dollars, so we we, we want to use them um, as efficiently as possible. Yeah. Uh, so, it's uh you know. One day at a time, but uh, you know it's it's been um, an interesting process. Uh, so yeah, we had Worcester, Cambridge, Fitchburg, with some others out there, uh, and we're hearing the same stories. It's it's just um, it's tough for for staff to jump in on something like this because it's federal dollars and it's uh, special economic development is the category of CDBG that's being used, and it's it's just known throughout the country as the most difficult component of CDBG to work with because there's so many strings attached. Okay. Um, so it, I think that's part of the reason why there aren't more communities trying to do this because there are a lot of, a lot of communities out there with CDBG money, they're smaller communities. They don't have the kind of staff that we do or Cambridge or Worcester, you know, Boston has one too, but they, I think their annual allocation is probably $20 million a year in CDBG. Ours is about 1.8. So we yeah. just, it, it comes down to staff in, in most yeah. cases. We've talked about this before, I know, and uh, you know it's it's ironic just coming off of CDBG Week back in um, April, and you know you're always touting the importance of this program and the benefits that it does uh, to the community. Here is uh, the ultimate example, really. Here, you know, you read my mind, Joe. It was a month ago that uh, uh, Melissa Pond, my colleague, and I were on this program talking about CD Week and how we we went to a, a virtual uh, community development week uh, this year. And uh, you're saying that's always a celebration where we, we try to advocate for CWG funding. And um, 
you know, this is not a political statement, but the president, since he took office, has tried to eliminate CDBG every year in every budget. And that, that's just a fact. I'm not, you know, that's not a soapbox, uh, you know, comment. It's, just, it, it's true. Um, and thank God for members of Congress like Stephen Lynch, who have been fighting for this program, you know, every year that they've been in office. If not for, for Congress, we wouldn't have a CDBG program to, to be able to administer these funds. So uh, definitely want to thank the congressman for his support uh, nationally and, and also t- obviously to the mayor for, for his commitment of, of matching funds for, for this program. Sure. Maureen, do you feel that the the um, outreach for the small business grant program is, has been adequate? I mean, do you think that you're getting the word out there so enough uh, businesses know about it? I think so. I think so. I think when the first we we can kind of tell in some of the in the pro software program that we're using, uh, it's called Neighborly. When there's a peak in applications, we can see that on the system, which is great. And the very first day that the mayor made the announcement, I mean, it went crazy. We were, you know, uh, the phones were ringing, the emails were coming in, so it was really exciting. Um, you know, we've gone, we've we've been in the sun. We have we have an extensive constant contact list that we mail out to regularly. Um, we get it through the chamber um, and some of our other business partners in the Asian community. So, I think we've really, you know. Uh, clearly we can't get it out through the mail, which uh, would have been one of those last kind of almost, you know, um, last ditch efforts. Um, but, but the way we've communicated uh, social media and, and just word of mouth and, and, and the newspaper, I think we've done a very good job at, at, at getting the word out. People are hearing about it. That's um, right. Yeah. So I would just suggest just, you know, if you see it, if you hear about it, you tell your other neighbors, tell your friends, um, and just keep the keep the word moving until you know um, until Friday and apply. Just apply and see what happens. That's what I'm telling business owners. If they're getting a little nervous and saying, you know, I probably won't apply. I mean, I probably won't qualify, or it looks a little complicated. Just apply. Get your foot in the door, and we can help you take it from there. Okay, yeah, great advice. I know that I've reached out to some of the small businesses I, you know, patronize uh, just because I want them to know about it and want them to be uh, able to to take advantage of it. I'm sure other customers are doing the same thing um, as well. So we should uh, recap uh, again the contact information um, for for folks uh, to learn about the small business grant program and how they get a hold of uh, the planning department uh, for more information. So I. I'm sorry. Are you put? Are you putting that? Do you want me to tell you that again? Please. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's the city's website, mm-hmm. QuincyMA.gov. On the top banner, there's a banner that says Small Business Grant. Click on the Small Business Grant. It'll bring you into the information page, and on that page, there's a link that'll bring you into the online application process. And in that page as well, there's um, a contact person, Jim Scribby. Um, I would tell you his number, but I don't know it off the top of my head. Sorry. That's okay. Um, but it's right there on the page, and, and he's really available for questions. I'm available for questions. If anyone feels like they want to reach out to me, my number is 617-376-1266. Um, people kind of refer me. They'll give my cell phone out. They'll give my office phone. Be happy to answer any questions by anyone um, looking for questions on the application or business questions in general. Okay, great. Anything else you think uh, we should add, uh, Sean or, or Maureen? I think that covers it. We just, uh, yeah. again, encourage people to try and get in that system by, by 4 p.m. tomorrow. Even if you can't submit by 4 p.m., you know, we're, we're, we're talking about, a, you know, maybe a couple day grace period for people to complete, but you have to at least register and start the process okay. by 4 p.m. Friday. So please, please, please. And we don't want anybody coming back to us and saying they didn't know about it or they didn't have enough time. You know, we, we can't start the underwriting process officially until all those are in. So we, we have to, we have to, you know, put mm-hmm. the lid on this thing and, and get moving. So um, you know, I just encourage folks to, again, submit by 4 p.m. tomorrow or at least start the process and then uh, upload everything that, that's required. And Sean, you made a good point when we were talking yesterday. Answer the phone. If there's a number from the city that comes in, folks, I know see, people get a little weirded out if they see the city of Quincy call and, oh, they'd call, you know, is it a tax collection? Is there something wrong? You know, there may be a call from, from the grant program um, people. Um, just asking for information, trying to fulfill the, the documents that are necessary for the application. So try and answer the phone and, and um, so we can get that process complete. And this is you know, a good opportunity to remind folks to, um, to respond to the federal census because that's what uh, CDBG money uh, is based on. So I know that's a big push this year as well. Good point. Thank you, Great both. Plug. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, if, if, if Quincy's population increases, then our allocation 
uh, presumably increases with it. So that's just, you know, more funding that we can uh, spend in the community. So uh, great plug. Thank you for mentioning that. Of course. Yeah. Thank you both. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Maureen. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to do this in person soon, but uh, yeah. <laughs> in the meantime, we'll this is not <laughs> Sounds Thanks, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Be well. You too.